Hi there, and a very warm welcome to Season 3, Episode 32 of People Soup. It's Ross McIntosh here. So that's kind of where I started. And then from there, I'm now in a place where I've the last uh, four years had my own company. This was not one of those, I don't want to be there anymore. This was one of those, I want more. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong. I want more. So today I have my own company. I have total freedom. Also too much work, as, as that looks like. But that's one of the things that I actually appreciate most in my life. I, I think sometimes when you work, you, you go to a job and you kind of try to fit in there. I wanted to create a working life that fit into my life. So I wanted to reverse that and see how can I live my life and then have my work support that and not try to fit into a nine to five job. Peace Supers, thanks for tuning in. This week it's part one of my chat with inspirational psychologist and captivating badass Ricky Kielgaard. You've just heard Ricky talking, and we cover loads more in our chat, including insights into Ricky's career, her discovery of ACT and contextual behavioural science, and a pivotal moment in her life. Ricky also selects a cracking song to announce her arrival. Now, P. Supers, I'm recording this intro in Spain, on a rooftop terrace in the heart of Granada, so you might notice some different background noises for a bit of authentic ambience. People Soup is a community of people who are interested in behavioural science at work, and how we can make it accessible, fun, and useful for ourselves and each other. At work, behavioral science has the capacity to enhance our well-being, help us be the person we want to be more often, and provide us with perspectives to enable cooperation, collaboration, and innovation. It was psychologist Abraham Maslow who said, a first-rate soup is more creative than a second-rate painting. And that was the inspiration for this podcast. More than ever, the world of work is a heady mix of people, behavior, events, and challenges. When the blend is right, it can be first rate. Behavioral science and psychology has a lot to offer in terms of recipes, ingredients, seasoning, spices and utensils. So welcome to People Soup, where we aim to nourish the mind and flourish at work. Reviews are in for our last episode, which was part two of my conversation with the wonderful Dr. Ray Owen. On Twitter, Becky Quick said, Finally listened to Ray Owen on People Soup with Ross McIntosh today. Another top episode, fabulous clarity on all things contextual behavioural science and psychological flexibility with a sprinkle of humour. Have a listen. Kevin Simpson also on Twitter said, Really loved these two episodes. Gentle, grounded wisdom from Ray as ever. Keep up the great work, Ross. And friend of the show Rose said, Another fabulous listen. I'm so in awe of the way Ray makes act and psychological flexibility so accessible. Unbundling my values is my go-to mantra from today. Thank you both so much. Well, thank you, Rose, Kevin and Becky, and to everybody who listened, commented and shared. It's very much appreciated. In other news, I'm really excited to announce our new training programme, Flexibility at Work, is actually on the way over four distinct modules. We're bringing ACT and contextual behavioural science to the workplace for individuals, teams and leaders. This is a joint project with P-Super and guru of organisational flexibility, Dr Annie Gascoigne. Doesn't everyone deserve some evidence-based behavioural science in their lives? We firmly believe that the workplace is an ideal arena to deliver these skills for life, and we're really proud of the programme we've developed. It's produced in collaboration with Joe Oliver at Contextual Consulting, and there's still time to sign up to join me and our Annie, hashtag MacGaza, for modules 2, 3 and 4. There's a link in the show notes, or you can go to contextualconsulting.co.uk. Finally in news, there's a feature now at the end of the podcast called The Gallery, where I highlight research, opportunities to take part in research, or interesting papers that you might like to have a look at. If you do enjoy the podcast, I'd love it if you would subscribe, rate and review it, whatever platform you're on. It helps us amplify our voice and reach more people with stuff that could be useful. As well as ratings and reviews, I've also set up a Ko-Fi page for the podcast. I love this podcast. It really chimes with my values, and I do it all in my spare time. If you enjoy the podcast and would be willing to support me in my endeavours, you can head over to ko-fi.com slash people soup and buy me a coffee. Well, actually, it's more of a pledge of £3 to support the podcast. I'll also give you a thank you shout out on the show. For now, get a brew on and have a listen to part one of my conversation with Ricky Kielgaard. Hey, 
Ricky Kjellgaard. Welcome to People Soup. Thank you so much, Ross, and thank you for the brilliant pronunciation of my name. <laughs> oh, goodness me, Pea Soup, as we did practice that. Yes. <laughs> I, I can't say it in Danish because that would take me intensive lessons, but I managed the the version I can cope with, Kjellgaard. Yes, yeah, sounds beautiful. Oh, thank you, Ricky. <laughs> now, how's things? How, you're in Denmark slash Sweden. What's it like on the other side of coming out of lockdown? Well, you know, I started wearing pants now. <laughs> 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 you know, I've been sitting here for months doing virtual or online trainings and therapy and stuff and... So we're just coming out this week. I was in Denmark doing face-to-face -face trainings. That was just wonderful. Obviously, with all the safety measures, etc. But I was actually out in the world this week, which was fantastic. Wow, I remember that in the olden days, doing workshops yes. with people in the room. With people in the room, like, yeah, you could see them, like, nodding and do stuff, and nobody's going to the bathroom while you're teaching. And so it's just been wonderful to, to do tra live training or, you know, in real life training. Wonderful. Oh, that's so great to hear. Now, Ricky, you may have heard that I have a research department who are variable in their level of research. They're yeah. not the best, to be honest, but I'd like to present you with what they've come across about you. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say it? That wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> you have full right of reply. Yeah. <laughs> but let me run through what they found. So, they say, Ricky runs ACT Denmark and is Denmark's first internationally approved ACT trainer. Yes. You are a licensed psychologist, highly experienced in teaching, coaching and supervision, and you've taught thousands of ACT practitioners, managers, staff, and helped implement ACT in a wide variety of settings. True, I did that. Get in. And <laughs> I had a sneaky look, oh sorry, my research department had a sneaky look at <laughs> the reviews on your website, oh. and they blew me away. So. Oh. I'm just going to read a couple of the headlines, but Peace Supers, you can go and read them yourself. I'll put a link to Ricky's website in the show notes. So here are some reviews. The best thing I've done for myself in many years. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and someone else said, wow, it was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Someone else said, on the course, Ricky lovingly and professionally provided space and opportunity for us all to get under the skin of ACT. Wow. So, I'm in awe. Well, <laughs> this is tremendous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm honoured, yeah. You certainly are honoured. <laughs> Guess what? Peace Supers, the Association for Contextual Behavioural Science recently announced that they were making Ricky a fellow recognised for her academic and human contributions to the science and practice of alleviating suffering in this world. Boom. Boom. Mic drop. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I, I suffer from like this like massive imposter syndrome. So every time there's somebody saying something, I'm like, well, you know, I'm, are you sure you're talking about the right person? So just know that I'm very humbled as I receive all of these nice words. And it's very normalizing to hear you say you have imposter syndrome and feel humbled. I think that's, that's very normalizing for, for all our humans listening out there. Yeah, because, you know, I see I have all these colleagues and I just yet read, you know, all about you before I got on here, Ross, and I'm like blown away by the stuff that you do. And I have all these colleagues who do lots of research and cool things and I just, you know, get up and go to work and do training all day. I'm not particularly academic in the way that I teach and in the way I go about things. So it, I'm very honored to be amongst so, you know, such great people as yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And that, that just in that sentence you started there, I'm just, yeah. I don't buy that. 
good one. <laughs> I do a lot of work on the way that we present ourselves. And I'm like teaching people, you know, to take out the justs. And I just did it. Good on mm. you for seeing that. Wow. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> so, so in summary, you're a psychologist who motivates people to be brave and confident badasses yes. while creating a meaningful life. I love that badass. Yes. I motivate people to be badasses. You can actually come to a workshop and get a certificate that you're now, you know, certified as a badass. Now, P Supers, this is the point where Squadcast took a dive, so we moved the interview over to Zoom. Now, a couple of other things. First of all, I can see it behind you, your art. Yes, you can see my art, yes. It's beautiful. Yes. So Ricky is quite an artist, and I can see it behind her in the room she's in, and it's beautiful stuff. Thank you so much. Where did you start? How did you learn? Did you well, do? a lot of years ago when I had my second child, I was home with him and I just felt like, I think I've always been quite creative. I, you know, I've always been involved in theater and music and I've done a lot of traveling and, you know, I came into psychology late. And so when I was home with my second child, I just felt like I wanted to do something and I started creating art. So I do that occasionally. And, you know, the stuff you see behind me is some of the newer things that I'm doing. And as you see, can you see the color of the room? Yeah, <laughs> the room. I would describe it, Zoom permitting, I would say it's kind of pinky yes, hue. Yes, exactly. It's kind of this blush. So also you'll find this color on my website. So I like colors and I like to use this also in my trainings. You know, you'll see in my slides are very colorful. I use music. Mm. I, you know, I teach uh, mindfulness to rock music. I try to incorporate all these kind of creative perspectives into the things that I do professionally. Wonderful. I love that embracing of art and music in within yes. training. Yes. Wow. wow. <laughs> I have one more piece of intelligence oh. gathered. It oh. says here you're in secret talks to take on a starring role in a new production of Les Miserables. <laughs> I have seen Les Miserables. So I can't even count it. And I'm like crying myself, you know, crying my eyes out every time. And you've probably been on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> or and you know so my kids they actually know bohemian rhapsody when we're in the car we can sing it and they know all the <laughs> lyrics and they won't like that i tell you this but we can actually do that so we sing a lot in our house and so you've probably seen me put on facebook you know inviting my family members to uh to do le miserable that would be wonderful well i look forward to that on something like exactly. tiktok Maybe you and the kids in the car doing exactly, Bohemian Rhapsody exactly. too. Oh, Ricky, thank you so much. Now, I can ask you to expand a bit on your background and your career, on how you've evolved to where you've got to today. Maybe share some pivotal moments. Yeah, so when I was a child, I wanted to be a fire truck. Uh, and, <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, thankfully, kind of changed. When I grew older, I wanted either to be a journalist or a psychologist. And I, you know, kept hanging on to the latter. And for many years, I think for five years, I was traveling around the world and, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. And I was just so interested in people and, you know, the humans and how we work and how we, you know, when we don't work <laughs> or, you know, when things go wrong. And so as I came back, I started studying psychology and, I was fortunate that just before I actually finished my studies, I was offered a job uh, at a company in Sweden. The company that arranged the first Worldcon in ACT, uh, psychology partners in Sweden, somebody saw a potential, I guess, and, and I was offered a job. And that's where I started. And I just came straight into ACT, like literally on the first day I was thrown into an ACT workshop and I was just, you know, sobbing my way through it. And I was like, oh my God, hallelujah, this is what I want to do. And this wonderful company just gave me the opportunity to learn and to start teaching. And they sent me away to workshops and I started arranging workshops. And so really, I'd like to consider myself competent. There's also a big part of this being me being in an environment that was just, you know, totally, I'm so blessed that they were just 
into act arranging stuff with Kelly Wilson, Kurt Strassel and Stephen Hayes. So I was just thrown right into it and had the opportunity to grow and they let me. So that's kind of where I started. And then from there, I'm now in a place where I've the last uh, four years had my own company. This was not one of those, I don't want to be there anymore. This was one of those, I want more. <laughs> like there's nothing wrong, I want more. So today I have my own company. I have total freedom, also too much work as, as that looks like. But that's one of the things that I actually appreciate most in my life. I, I think sometimes when you work, you, you go to a job and you kind of try to fit in there. I wanted to create a working life that fit into my life. So I wanted to reverse that and see how can I live my life and then have my work support that and not try to fit into a nine to five job. Does that make mm. sense at all? It makes perfect yeah. sense. Yes. It's, I love the way you describe the balancing of the different yeah. areas of your life and realizing that you could have yeah. a career that's entirely possible that can fit around your other roles yes. and, and responsibilities yes. in life. Yes. I love it. Me too. So I have my own company. That moment where you were thinking about, Right, I'm going to start my own company. What was that like? It was very, very scary. I, I left psychology partners a few years before that to do something else. We were actually running a treatment facility for young women. And whilst that was, of course, very important and, and wonderful, there was just something like I wanted as much freedom as possible. I want flexibility. I want to incorporate art. I want to incorporate music. And so when I started thinking about it, I was, sh can we swear? Pea supers, can we swear? We certainly can. Okay, so for the pea supers, I was shit scared. I am lucky enough to be in an environment of people who are like, you can do this. And if you can't, that will be a learning opportunity as well. Somebody will probably hire you. Well, why don't you give it a go? And at that time, I was in the middle of the divorce. I remember this. It was so vulnerable. I was like, okay, my life is literally falling apart, right? I'm moving out of my house. My marriage crashed. I'm fucking up my kids because, you know, all of that. I might as well also like just jump, quit my job. So whilst I was in chaos, I was like, okay, let's rebuild and do something. And so again, I, I'm fortunate to be surrounded by good people. I, I knew a lawyer and I knew an accountant who was like, who would help me to set it up. And then I just started one step at a time. You're like crying, doing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, being up all night, there's a lot. I don't want it to sound like it's just easy. It was hard work and it was totally worth it. Blimey, talk about pivotal yes. moments. So at the moment when you were in a, quite a vulnerable yes. state, having those thoughts yes. about your impact on other people, yes. you thought, hell, let's do something else as well. Let's, let's start, start a company. A company. And I remember at that time, like, literally I was moving. I moved my kids to another town and my ex-husband moved to yet another town. And I remember like, so when I put them to bed, I was literally painting the walls at night and I was crying and it just was really, really horrible. And leaving the company I was in was horrible because, you know, I was not sure whether this would work. And it was just a horrible period. And if you asked me, I'd say I was the worst mom like ever. This was just a few years ago. I needed to call my parents to come help me because I was just a mess. And so the year after or two years after, I went to a conference. So, you know, the, the world conferences that, that you, know, you and I go to and I actually brought my children. And then somebody came over and talked to my oldest son and uh, said something like, well, you've got a pretty cool mom or something like that, <laughs> which was very sweet. And my son was, yeah, she's very cool. And, and this person said, so what's the coolest thing about your mom? I, and I was not part of the conversation I was next to, but I was like, oh shit, what's, what's he going to say now? If you would ask me, what do you fear that he'd say? And then I'd fear that my children would say she was a mess. She gambled with economy and everything. But my son said the way she gets up when life knocks her down. 
Wow. And so, so then it was all horrible. I was unsure of everything. I'm blessed to have clients who kept coming to me, regardless of the company I was in. People asked me to do trainings. But if you ask me then, I would say I was a complete mess. And my sons saw that as well. And they also saw the way I got up when life knocked me down. And I think that is one of the most important things that I also try and teach people now, that life will knock you down. It's in the getting up that is important, the way you get up. And that was, you know, pivotal moments, Ross, pivotal moments. Love it. I'm kind of speechless, which isn't that good for a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) But I love that. It's in the way you get up. It's in the way you get up. I remember many, many years ago, I had a conversation with my good friend, Kelly Wilson, and I was unsure of my marriage and, you know, other things. And he said something that was so important. He said, stay with dignity or go with dignity. And so that in the period of getting a divorce from my husband, getting a divorce from the the former company where I was employed, trying to connect to the person I'd like to be and honor that, that was the way I got through it and the way I got up. Sounds like you had amazing people around you as well. I have amazing people around me. Mm. And I think sometimes we can feel like we're on our own in a situation like that. We can we can withdraw and become a bit yes. isolated. Yes. And I think there's something powerful in allowing yourself to reach out and allowing yourself to be kind of carried by the people that care about you. And that was so important because I don't like I don't ask for help. And I was never taught to ask for help. My mom and dad are like badasses who are like they cope with everything. And and, and so I, I have the utmost respect. And they would say. Oh, oh, ask for help. Like they would say it, but they would never show it. So one of the things that I'm trying now to teach my sons is that it's okay to ask for help and that it's okay to allow yourself to be carried. Mm, Wonderful. Your company, I've seen the beautiful website. I have three websites. It's crazy. The one you've seen, I have the one, the, the Danish one for the Danish audience. I have a Swedish one and I actually do have... A, it's the same website, but if you want to see it in English, it's my name, like rickykilgard.com. I'll make sure to send them to you. What are your values in your business and this business you've created? Again, I'm going to be swearing. So I, I think, you know, I want to show up and do good shit. <laughs> so my values are to, first of all, of course, to deliver evidence-based science and deliver act uh, in a way that people understand. I think there's a great potential of explaining stuff in a very complicated way. And I really try to make it accessible to everybody and make it understandable. So that is the one. And then I think it's important. Well, for me, it's important to be authentic. So if you go to my trainings, you'd see that I'm talking about my children and the people close to me I'm crying so modeling act instead of just talking about act is important to me to show the model and not just talk about the model love Mm. is important to me so you'd see me be very loving towards the people that I work with so kindness and love and vulnerability are kind of the some of the values that I'm driven by in the work that I do and I don't know about you, P-Supers, but I can really feel those values radiating from you. It's wonderful. You. That level of authenticity, Rick, is phenomenal to Thank witness. <laughs> now, as a musical person, I often ask my guests to choose yes. a song, a song that they'd like to announce their arrival in a room or an online location over the next few months. So have you had a chance to think about a song that you'd choose, Ricky? You know, there would be a variety depending on the context. And actually, the first song I thought of, I'm going to say it in just a second, I kept it to myself. Then I asked my partner and my kids, what would you think? And they said the same song. (laughs) And actually, I, I play it a lot. We Will Rock You by Queen. Like, 
I just love that. We're fans of Queen in this house and we'll sing it in different harmonies. And I will actually start some of my workshops with that. Just to set the stage. How did it? <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's got that power and that force and that. It's, you know what it's got? It's got that it badassery. Got, it has badassery, yes. You know. So I can't remember. How does it start? Is, it, is that the one that starts? Exactly. And it starts with the, you know, the clapping and the stomping, like, do, do, do. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I'm you can't. Gonna, okay, we can't yeah. just, no, <laughs> just clap into the microphone. We yeah, can't do that. Clapping is not best like, for Mike. <laughs> <I'll put> a... <laughs> We will, yeah. we will rock you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. And I think kind of basically that's what, you know, we're trying to do in the workshop, to rock you. Yes. Love it. Wow. I love this energy and this spirit <laughs> and this beauty coming from you. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much. Peace supers, that's it, in the bag. I'd like to thank Ricky for being such a wonderful badass. And you, dear listener, have the joy of part two to look forward to. If you like this episode of the podcast, could I invite you to share it with one other person? I'm really keen to spread the behavioural science and skills with more people. Of course, a subscription, rating or review are also very much appreciated. The show notes are at rossmackintosh.co.uk and this includes links to a few different platforms. And before I sign off, as promised, a new feature. Welcome to the gallery. This is where I'll highlight interesting stuff from the contextual behavioural science community, like resources, research papers, and even opportunities to take part in research. I'd like to start with two recently published papers, both on the same theme. The first one is called Nonverbal IQ Gains from Relational Operant Training Explain Variants in Educational Unattainment an active controlled feasibility study. And this is from Shane McLaughlin, Ian Tyndall, both former guests, and Tonina Pereira and Teresa Mulhern. The second paper is called Relational Operant Skills Training Increases Standardized Matrices Scores in Adolescents, a Stratified Active Controlled Trial. And that is from Shane McLaughlin, Ian Tyndall, and Antonina Pereira. So what are these papers all about? Well, first of all, you can have a look yourself because I'll put a link in the show notes. These papers are such an important step indicating that training programs that rely on the cultivation of relational skills can show enhancement in children's general cognitive ability and intelligence quotient, or IQ. And they also show what's called far transfer to educational outcomes. Congratulations to all of you involved in that research, and please do go and have a look at the papers. And finally on the gallery, a study for you to get involved in from Will Kent, a PhD student at the University of Chester. He's looking for employees from any occupation to take part in an online study, exploring a measure of how capable you feel to manage stress at work. And there's a link in the show notes so you can take part. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes, and it's really important research. So that's our first gallery. If you've got stuff you'd like to flag or highlight in the gallery, please get in touch, and I'd be happy to include it. Speaking of getting in touch, you can get in touch with me at peoplesoup.pod at gmail.com. On Twitter, we are at PeopleSoupPod, on Instagram at People.Soup, and on Facebook, we are at PeopleSoupPod. Thanks to Andy Glenn for his spoon magic and to you for listening. Look after yourselves, peace supers, and bye for now. Get on. I'll just double check that both lights are coming up, so I can see my light going boom, boom, boom. Mm hmm Oh, and there's... Your, yes, ba-ba, 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 yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>